Hello, hello, hello. Patrice Stewart here, your favorite tax and business strategist. Today, I would like to talk to you all about self-employed, sole proprietors, right? How do you transition to that next level, to that next step? Once you've established yourself as a sole proprietor, now what, right? You have your bookkeeping together. Now what, right? What are the next steps that you're going to take? So, Once you have your business and you're a sole proprietor and you have established that this is the business that you're going to do, you're making money in your business, you have your bookkeeping together, now what you can do is you want to actually transition yourself over on paper, all right? And so you hear us hear us talk about this a lot of times saying you want to get on paper, you want to transition, you want to be a real business on paper, right? And so the reason why we say this is banks and credit companies like to see you established. So when I say established, they like to see paperwork. They like to see that you're an LLC. They like to see that you're a corporation. They like to see that you're a not-for-profit, right? One of the benefits of doing that is, and when you set yourself up on paper is, you look a lot more serious about your business when you're actually on paper. When you have an EIN number, if you are a sole proprietor and you do not have an EIN number, make sure that you get that after you've established yourself. I always say set up the business first and then you apply for your EIN number because this might happen to you. What if you have been utilizing a certain name while you've been in business as a sole proprietor, but now that you are ready to transition on paper, what if your name is not available? What if someone else already has that name? It's not too common, but it does happen. I have worked with clients who are now ready to transition from being a sole proprietor, and when we're ready to file their paperwork, the name is already taken. So that is one of the biggest issues that um, that might arise, right? When you are looking to file your paperwork with the Secretary of State, there may be a case where your name is taken. So what can you do in that case? If your name is taken, you might have to recreate some things. You might have to add another name or another title or switch the name around a little bit because this is the problem. If someone else has registered that name, you cannot obtain that name. And so this is another reason why it's very important and we talk about this here on this channel with you establishing your paperwork and your name very early on, especially if you know that this is the business for you and this is something that you really want to do long term. Okay. In the event that your name is taken, you will have to make some adjustments. You can still register the name, but like I said, you might need to add something onto it at the beginning or the end, um, but you definitely have to change it around a little bit. Now, let's say that your name is available and you can register it. You want to do that immediately. You want to go ahead and do that. Also, what you want to do is check with USTPO which is the United States Trademark Office, okay? Because what a lot of people don't understand is really you don't own your name until it's trademarked, okay? So if that name is registered with the trademark um, site, with the government site, USTPO, that's another kind of red flag for you to let you know that that name is not available. So you can be running your company out of Illinois, But someone in Washington might have your same company. But if they have the trademark for that name, you actually can no longer use that name. So it's very important to kind of check on these things when you're first getting ready to set up and establish yourself as a business. Um, You always want to check the government website, which is USTPO.com or, I'm sorry, .gov. Or USTPO.gov is the site. That's the United... Um, that's the office of the trademark. So that's where you would actually trademark your company. So you can trademark a name, you can trademark a logo. The other site that you want to make sure that you're registering and looking up is the Secretary of State, right? So the Secretary of State office is how you actually file your paperwork, your LLC, or your corporation, or your non-for-profit. But like I said, outside of those factors, that's what's going to start taking you over to that next level. Once you have that 
paperwork on file with the Secretary of State. Now you want to start building business credit. Business credit is really what's going to help you elevate, especially as a solo entrepreneur or a self-employed person. Because this is the other thing. Once you have credit established in the business name and you're utilizing credit, now you're able to hire on more staff. Now you're able to pay for marketing or video content or content creation, right? Now you're able to do more in your business because now you have access to funding. So immediately, once you are ready to level up and transition from that sole proprietor seat and actually start gaining and, and hiring employees or hiring staff and building business credit, that's what's going to take you to that next level. And so make sure that you are stay tuned for more information so we can help keep you on target and give you these tips that will help you get to the next level. See you soon.